university here has a very long-standing reputation. It was one of the first universities in the country that uh, had an established school of environmental sciences. Um, scientific teams here have been participating in this whole debate about climate change since the 60s, uh, particularly with the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, the university that has the biggest contribution in the world uh, in IPCC. Energy is the most important resource we have for every process we run. That includes, you know, in the industrial sector, in the built environment, the households. We have buildings that sometimes they're old, sometimes they're inefficient, sometimes energy management in these buildings requires some very advanced approach, some very advanced systems that really bring things up to speed. The national grid operates at a frequency of 50 gigahertz. As soon as it deviates from that, uh, there's potential problems. It could be blackouts uh, or it could be overload in certain parts of the system. So it's got to be maintained around that stable position of 50 hertz. Historically, that's always been done through power stations providing additional supply or less supply into the system. What Open Energy has been able to do is change the game completely and move that to the demand side using assets such as air conditioning, fans, pumps, and by making minor adjustments to those, that can provide the balance that the grid needs and keep it within its frequency. The Open Energy proposition is called Dynamic Demand and it's made up of a number of components, some physical equipment but also some patented software that we've developed uh, that actually allows the assets that we manage to interact with the national grid. Open Energy has a very broad range of clients from a whole range of different industry sectors, ranging from water companies to bitumen manufacturers uh, to retailers, hospitals, universities. We are a significant energy user. Um, you know, we're bringing in five and a half megawatts of electricity during the day, three and a half megawatts during the night. During the winter, we need 12 megawatts of heat, even in summer, because we've got residents, so it's uh, a significant energy user. We've got some of the best low energy buildings in the country. We've got a very significant building management system that controls all our buildings to the, to the best advantage. When we are talking to clients about implementing dynamic demand, firstly it's, it's new um, to most organisations that there is potential to generate revenue from their existing assets. They're used to using those assets, getting an energy bill and paying that energy bill. They're not aware that they can actually use that to provide a service back to the national grid, which could either give them a new revenue stream or could mitigate some of their energy costs. One of the buildings we've managed to put on this was as Constable Terrace, one of our residences, and that building's got 30 air handling units in it. I mean, it's super insulated and the rest of it, but they are electric air handling units with a supply and extract fan and an electric heater in there. And as part of this um, project, we've been able to connect those all together, control that demand, but also get information back now that we didn't have before of if those fans fail or the filters need changing, um, it's been beneficial to us. The criteria we went through you know, in considering this type of technology was, you know, was it going to affect our customers, the students, the staff, you know, the users of the campus? Were they going to know it was happening? Did we still have control over it? Dynamic demand fits in with our, our system because it is part of our system. It's part of the building management system. That's the thing that's controlling it. It's just giving it another feed into the system to tell the controller what actions to take. So it's a completely seamless added function. A, our customers won't know anything about it. B, we actually get a financial return and we can still control it if it is having a, a, you know, a detriment effect to our customers. Governments and many industry commentators are now talking about the, uh, the energy trilemma. That is, how do we have clean, affordable and secure energy supply? And we believe that, that dynamic demand can make a contribution to all of those things. It is no secret that really at the moment uh, the, the UK is faced with shortage in energy supply. We do realise that by shutting down specific power stations, particularly old coal power stations, uh, some old nuclear power stations that will have to be made redundant in the next few years, um, the UK will be left 
with a quite serious uh, power shortage. This is not a very easy subject really for the government and so it is trying to subsidize and push forward for better management of the energy that we actually have. It is really a matter of bringing the best available technology in place and really managing to have a system which is responsive and is flexible to be able to have a robust and resilient energy supply. And that's what open energy has, what dynamic demand.